Welcome to our Process Risk Analysis and Mistake Proving eLearning Training Module. Our eLearning Training Modules are created using Microsoft PowerPoint and then converted to an HTML5 file. That allows you to view and listen to our eLearning Modules pretty much using any internet browser on your desktop, laptop, tablet or even mobile phone. HTML5 is also supported by most learning management systems. So you can easily add our e-learning module to your existing portfolio of e-learning solutions. If your learning management system needs a different file type, just contact us directly and we can see what we can do for you. This e-learning module is based on our process risk analysis and mistake proving training material. To review the complete training material covered in this e-learning module, please click on the link below. The following slides are actually from the actual e-learning module, just to give you a preview of the module itself. Welcome to our Process Risk Analysis and Mistake Proving e-learning training module. My name is Frank and I'm going to be the instructor of this course. The course is divided into seven chapters and it will take a little bit more than three hours to complete. So let's get started. As a result, we have divided this e-learning module into seven sections. Uh, the first section, I'm going to give you an introduction into mistake proving. Uh, then we're going to talk about the process variables map, how to do one, how to develop one uh, for the process that we are analyzing. Then we're going to discuss the cause and effect matrix and also going to have some examples there. Step four, then we're going to start looking at the process FMEA or process failure mode and effects analysis. And uh, as I said, the process FMEA has a risk analysis integrated and we're going to discuss that in section five. After that, then we're going to drive improvements uh, in the process that we are analyzing here by addressing uh, human errors. So we're going to discuss the 16 human error modes and um, the six mistake proving principles there and how can we apply them uh, to improve our process and address some of the risks uh, that we have identified as part of the process FMEA. And then last not least, section seven, we're going to discuss process control plans. You know, what is a process control plan and how to develop one for the process uh, that we have analyzed here that is in scope. So now all the preparation work is done. We have identified our top 10, 15 X's maybe from our process that have the biggest risk uh, for our process not to deliver desirable results. Now we're going to take those X's one by one and work them through the process FMEA. So let's look at how that will work. So here you see the process failure mode and effects analysis template that is included in the Excel file that comes with this e-learning module. Many organizations are actually using the process FMEA template as a control document. So therefore you're seeing there uh, the header uh, which states, you know, what is the process we are analyzing here? Who is the responsible person or the owner of this process FMEA? Who uh, did prepare the process FMEA? And then also a documentation number on origination date and the last revision date. But vast more important are the different columns that you see here in the process FMEA template. And uh, let's first discuss the different columns uh, and then we're going to look at an example and see how do we develop a process FMEA based on the results that we got from our cause and effect matrix.
To start the process failure mode and effects analysis, we're going to go back to our cause and effect matrix, where we looked at all the inputs and X's in our process and we prioritized them. And we're going to take one of those process inputs and X's uh, that we have there in the top 10, 15 X's that got the highest rating. And uh, that process input and X, we're going to type into column two. So there we enter the process input and the X that we want to analyze. In column one, we're going to enter the name of the process step or the activity uh, from where that process input uh, comes from. Then we need to ask ourselves and our team of how this process input and X can fail. So the question is not, why would it fail or what would be the result of that failure, but how can that process input X can fail? So for example, if the process input is data and the X, the attribute or characteristic of data is accuracy, then the failure mode would be the data is inaccurate. Or if the input is a person that actually does um, the work in that process step and the attribute would be the availability of that person, then the failure mode would be the person is not available. Or if the input is an oven and the X is the temperature of the oven, then a failure mode would be that the temperature of the oven could be too high or too low and that could cause problems. So the failure mode is always that the X is not what it needs to be for our process to deliver the desired results. The only situation where this becomes a little bit more difficult is if the input is a person, an operator, for example, that does the work and the attribute is the experience. In that case, the failure mode is not that the operator is inexperienced, but the failure mode is that the operator or the person makes a mistake in this process step and that may lead to our process not delivering the, the right results. And for that, we have our 16 human error modes because there are 16 different types of mistakes a person can do. And we're going to dig deeper into much more in one of the next section there when we're talking about mistake proving. But for now, let's just look at what are those 16 human error modes. And those you are seeing here, so that's a list of the 16 human error modes, which goes back to some research that was done uh, many years ago where people are looking at or looked at uh, over 3,000 specific mistakes people can do in different types of industries and different types of processes and uh, they tried to build categories uh, of these mistakes and they came up with these 16 human error modes. So the first eight or nine uh, human error modes can happen in any type of process. Uh, if you're looking at the error modes 10 to 16, they are more related to assembly or manufacturing type of uh, processes. So if you're working in the service industry, that may not be that applicable to you. Um, so if you're looking just at a few, you know, the first one is omission. That means a person could forget to do something uh, in a certain process step. Or excessive insufficient repetition means that a person is doing something too often or not often enough. For example, instead of drilling two holes, uh, the person only drills one hole or three holes. Or a person could do something in the wrong order and that leads to the process not delivering the desired results. Or does something too early or too late and that causes problems. So again, we're going to dig deeper into those 16 human error modes in one of the later sections, uh, but if your input is a person and the attribute or characteristic of that input is experience, then the failure modes become one or several of these 16 human error modes.
So here we have a few examples about what we mean with uh, those human error modes. So let's look at the process step uh, that says uh, we are inserting the coffee filter. And obviously what we want to get out of that step is that we have a filter in the coffee machine and it's the right filter and it's also in the right position. So for example, not upside down or it's not properly opened. So if you're looking at human errors that a person could do here in this step is uh, for example, is omission that, uh, you know, the person forgot to put the filter in the coffee machine altogether or excessive repetition that, you know, accidentally we're putting in two filters or three filters and that, you know, may lead uh, for our coffee not uh, being strong enough. Uh, also, a person could select the, the wrong filter, so wrong selection there. Um, you know, maybe the filter is too small or is too large if we have different types of filters for different types of uh, coffee machines. Or the person could misalign the filter or not properly open the filter. And again, that would lead to our process to not deliver uh, the desired results. I hope that the previous slides gave you a good preview of the e-learning module itself. After you have downloaded the e-learning module to your own computer, you can share the module with your colleagues and reuse it as you need within your organization. The main restriction is that you can't distribute, sell, rent or license the material. Now, these training courses are for your and your organization's usage only. If you have any further questions, please contact us via phone or email and you find all the information on our website www.operationalexcellenceconsulting.com. Thank you.